Good evening. This is the second webinar with the 3P pioneers from the 3PGC. Tonight, we're happy to have Marina Galan from Mexico, Mexico, I should say, uh, <laughs> here. Um, she's a long time uh, practitioner, coach, um, well, well-known person in the 3P world. <laughs> and we're so happy to see she's going to do this webinar for us tonight. Um, we discussed this a little bit beforehand and we, we, we discussed that you, was, you were going to tell us how, you, how 3P came about in your life and what it's, what it's been doing for you. That is what we discussed indeed. Okay. Let's, let's have a look. Thank you very let's much. Have a look. Well, it's, it's, it's funny how listening to other people's stories sometimes can be enough. The very first immersion I had in the, worlds of, in the world of the three principles was at a pre -P conference in the US. I don't know how long ago maybe 12 years ago that that doesn't sound as long as the pioneers honestly but <laughs> <laughs> but something like 12 years ago and um and i had been told that we were going to a conference on you know the the functions of the mind and the nature of the mind and spirituality and all this and after two days of of, of just seeing people tell their stories i was dumbfounded i was like what are they talking about? This is not a conference about anything except the stories of the people. And yet at the same time, I slowly started seeing something and I started most of all feeling something different in the conference itself, but also in myself. So the story of, of how the principles came into my life or, or the principles destroyed what I thought was my life or dissolved what I thought was my life or <laughs> any way you want to put it is it's quite intriguing because I came into the principles kicking and screaming I was basically forced blackmailed into studying the principles by by the person I, I, I used to be married to and he he used to be he's a very good negotiator and he really, really, really wanted me to study this. And so he was pushing for it, rooting for it. And um, in my mind, I had been a lifelong student of philosophy and religions and spirituality and all sorts of traditions. and. And so suddenly along comes this man who has never studied anything but numbers and economics and stuff and tells me he has found the last Coca-Cola in the desert and you need to study this. And I was like, no, I don't. Go away. Of course, everything you find at first is going to sound like you found the doors to heaven. I don't need this in my life. This is working for you. You go and study this. I will stay in my own path. But as I said, he's a very good negotiator. So he tried and tried and tried. And after maybe a year or so, I complied and I said, okay, I will listen to this stuff. And, and it was an online program way before Zoom, evidently. And it was only audio. And uh, you had to call in and you could hear all these voices from people all over the world discussing these things. And very shortly after that, was that was when that first conference uh, happened. Now, here's what's really interesting. He's, he kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and, and, and he really drove me to the heart of it all. And I deeply disliked the messengers he had chosen for me. But at some point I, I decided to separate the messenger from the messages. And, and I really started 
listening. And I remember being asked before my, my first training program, what would need to change in your life to make, to make this be worth your while? And I didn't even have to think about it. It came out instantly. And my answer was, if I can trust life more, this will be worth my while. I didn't even know what that meant, trust life more, right? Like, what is that, trust life more? I don't, I, I, I don't believe I knew what I was talking about. I don't believe I knew what I was asking for. But anyway, on I went, and that, that's how my journey began. And very subreptitiously, the understanding really started to go deep into my soul. Things started changing. I, I didn't even really know why. What I did notice is that I was having different ideas. I was having different thoughts. And I was responding to things differently. And for whatever reason, the way I was responding to things seemed to be more useful, seemed to have better results. So, for example, at that time, one of my sons, I have three boys, one of my sons was going through a very vicious bullying experience. He was being, and, and what I, when I say vicious is because he wasn't being, you know, pushed in the hallway or being called names. No, he was actively, like he had this little lunchbox made out of a cloth and it would come home with 37 scissor stabs on it or things like that. I, I know, so, vicious, right? <laughs> so things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I could see that he was suffering. Now, mind you, you know that be the change you want to be in the world thing? I had taken that very literally. And because my greatest value was peace, I was raising peaceful children, pacifists. And so as I had imposed that personality on them, evidently that personality was not very helpful in dealing with such vicious bullying. <laughs> it was stopping his wisdom from communicating with him at all costs. And, and so I would see him asking everyone, what should I do? So he would ask uh, his uncles and his cousins and his grandparents and everybody would give him ideas and he would go and try out these ideas, but nothing would work. And it went on for many, many months. And at some point I got really worried because I could see that this thing was happening in his life. But all the rest of his life was beautiful and all sorts of wonderful things were happening. But he could not focus on those because he was so focused on that one thing that was not working. And it broke my heart to see him suffering like that. And I was driving home one day thinking about this. And there was the most beautiful sunset you can imagine it was magical i mean disney level of sunset you know and i looked at it and i heard myself say oh come on man can't you wait a little let me figure this thing out and i'll go back to you i'll go back to admiring you and in that moment i realized i was doing exactly the same thing my son was doing and in that moment, I realized, oh, this is what I've been innocently teaching him. This is what I have been modeling for him. And so after that day, I surrendered to the process of dismantling his pacifist personality 
and throwing the ball back to him and say, and really have him see that nobody could give him the answer. Nobody could give him the solution. It had to come from within himself. And that night, we were having some sort of conversation around that. And he told me, so you tell me what is the best way to respond to an insult? And I said, is that one? And he laughed out loud and he said, you mean to tell me that after millions of years of human beings being on earth, no one has the answer for what's the best way to respond to an insult? I said, well, there can't be an answer because there is no recipe, right? It all depends on who the person is, the tone of voice, if there are other people around, who those people are at the whole context. Like the best way to respond to that has to come from your inner wisdom in the moment. And your inner wisdom in the moment can only speak to you if you are present enough to read the moment and listen to yourself. And so that was it. The whole game for the, for, the, for, for the following few weeks was like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? How do you get quiet? When you get quiet, you can trust what occurs to you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he figured it out. He solved the whole thing after a few weeks. And that was miraculous to me. Miraculous. I had searched for the recipe my whole life. I had heard search for the recipe to be not okay, but to cope okay. <laughs> yes, I didn't know that I could be okay. I thought I could cope okay. My childhood was not easy, just as anyone else's, right? And, and there were so many beliefs around how damaged I was and why, and how, how that was truly, really who I was. And so how I, was, I was searching for the way to have that Frankenstein cope and survive in the world. After that day talking to my son, I, I called off the search completely. I called off the search and I vowed to not look anywhere but within ever again, or try at least, right? Because we're human and we are and we do. But yes, that's what happened. And so, Thus began the endless, beautiful, miraculous, heartbreaking path of trust. So I started trusting, or so I thought, right? I was trusting myself and my inner wisdom in the moment, and I was not listening to anything outside of myself. And all these, all these ideas I had around it. But as you all very well know, this path in the principles takes you back to the same things, but has you see them in a deeper level. And it takes you back to the same things and has you seen them at a deeper level. And so what I thought was trust at the beginning, I now see as the lamest caricature of trust that you could ever come up with. I had no idea of what trust was. I was surrendering to it, but I had no idea of what it was, right? And so the process has been really, truly discovering the nature of trust, the possibility of trust, the surrendering to trust, and the manifestations of trust in life. So... For example, one day, beautiful sunrise in front of the ocean, 
flat, nothing was moving. And a kayak was moving along, just cutting the water open. And I am looking at this. And then it occurs to me, just like that, the words inside were, what does trust look like without future or preference? And I was stunned by that question. You're like, what do you mean without future or preference? And so I started reflecting on it. And what I realized was that what we usually understand as trust has to do with a future state, with a future result, right? We trust the light at the end of the tunnel and the peace after the storm. And we trust that because that is our preference. We prefer light and we prefer calm. But can we trust the storm? Can we trust the tunnel? Can we trust what is right now, regardless of what is right now, even if it's chaos, even if it's absolute lostness? Can we trust that it is necessary? That it is doing its work in us? Who will bring us to a new reality? And so after many, many weeks of living with that question, what does trust look like without future and without preference? I discovered that the only possibility is to become an offering to the present moment to surrender completely and fully to him and offer yourself to the present moment so that it can collaborate with you, so that it can bring out of you what it needs from you. Anthony de Mello says that enlightenment is absolute collaboration with the inevitable. When I heard that, I was like, hold on a second. So what is... What does the inevitable mean? <laughs> and I lived with that question for a while. And then it was like, but hold on, what is collaboration? And then I lived with that question for a few weeks. And then it was like, what is absolute? What is absolute collaboration with the inevitable? What is, what is that? What is the inevitable? Now, as you can see, I, I enjoy living with questions. It seems to me that the nature of life is conversational. And if we are brave enough to bring a question to life, it must answer it. And if we ask it again, it must answer it in a different way. And if we ask it again, it must answer it in a different way. This is wisdom in the moment, right? That is how we grow and we expand. Later on, I realized something. Oh my God, I am wanting to trust life as if life was separate from me. Just like, oh, I can, I want to trust nature. What do you mean you want to trust nature? Like you're, you're part of it, you're, you're the very fabric of it. So if you place yourself outside of nature, the whole relationship changes. If you place yourself outside of life, then you need to learn to trust it. But if you realize that you are the fabric of life, then trust becomes a completely different thing. And here's what I mean by that. I don't know if this happens in your language, but this happens in my language, okay? There are certain words that do not belong to the two persons in a relationship. So this is the example. There is a word for the person who gives charity, no? Charitable. 
but there is not a word, there is not a noun for the person that receives. So charity belongs to the giver, yes? Now, in my language, there is a word for the person that begs for money, the beggar. But there is not a word for the person who gives to a beggar. Do you see what I mean? So who does trust belong to? The receiver or the giver of trust? Is that something you offer to others or is it something you earn from others? How do you relate to trust? Is it something that is there and then it can be lost or is it something that is not there and then can be built? And we use these words like they were the most common thing and everybody knows what we're talking about and there is a common agreement and there isn't. We each have a unique experience of trust. And so when I saw that I was separating myself from life and saying, oh, I want to trust life. And I started seeing that the separation was illusion. What was there to trust? Me? Something bigger than? Me within something bigger? Me not there, just something bigger out of the equation? Or was there just trust? And what did that mean in terms of how I lived my life? Of how I inhabited life? What the three principles have given me, that this understanding has made possible. It has not only brought myself back, not as a Frankenstein, so that's something completely different. The possibility of everything. But most importantly, the possibility of me. I have realized that I did not come into this life I came out of it. I did not come into this world. I came out of this world. I was summoned by life. And it took life millions of years of work to produce me and call me forward. I am not here by accident. I am here to collaborate with the inevitable, collaborate with creation, and allow creation to come through me with the only flavor that can come through me. And so the balance between diluting yourself out of the equation and allowing the truth of you to come forward through, what, through whatever gets created by a you is such an exquisite dance. You feel like one of those chefs in the most amazing kitchens in the world, you know, like and take spices and bring them forward and some cinnamon and let's, come, let's bring some, I don't know. It's just, you Feel it. There is no recipe. Because there's never been a you before. You get to discover what that is. And in the meantime, you get to discover what others are. Isn't that amazing? Like we get to discover others as we discover ourselves. And as we allow ourselves to be, we give permission to others to be fully and completely in the world and collaborate in this, in this, we don't even know what it is. This universal, universal, glorious mystery.
we cannot exist in the reality we see after the principles without absolute trust. And yet it is still a path. And you go back to see the same thing from a deeper level and again and then again. Now, I was looking for a way to cope. I was looking for a way to survive. I did not know that a rich, beautiful, amazing, miraculous life was possible. But I know now that I don't know what's possible yet. And that in order to discover what is possible, I need to surrender again and again and again. But because you cannot see a new reality from an old reality, you cannot see a new paradigm from an old paradigm, you need to surrender your whole life in order to access a new one. You see what I meant by the offering? You become an offering. You give yourself up in exchange for, we don't know what, something amazing. It's like one of those game shows, you know? You have won $10,000. Would you like to exchange those for what's behind door number one, not door number two or door? It's just that there are infinite doors and we get to exchange what we have as many times that we want. Knowing that if we are aligned with that inner wisdom, with that good feeling, with that largest possibility, it will always get better. I mean, come on, isn't that the deal of a lifetime? It will always get better. It's insane, people. So what has changed in my life? Everything. My relationship to myself has changed because I am now discovering myself who I am every day. I have no idea. I am discovering my kids. I am discovering my friends. I am discovering what my job is. How life speaks to me today. I love but the meaning of love has changed completely as well and I cannot for now let's say for now I cannot for now imagine a greater love than allowing something to be completely what it is Allowing someone to be completely what they are, giving them absolute freedom to be and discover themselves. Honor that. Honor their path, their wisdom, their possibility, their choices. Allow them to live that. Isn't that a greatest love? You know what's the beauty of it? That's how loved you are. Isn't life allowing you? Isn't life allowing you to be whatever you are choosing to be? To feel whatever you are choosing to feel? To think whatever you are choosing to think? To experience whatever you are choosing to experience? I mean... You are free to suffer the way you choose to suffer. Come on. It doesn't get any freer than that. You want to suffer that way? Go ahead. Go for it. It is allowed. Not necessarily recommended, but it is allowed. That's, that's the level of trust life has in you. You want to do that? 
Perfect. Let's do that. Let's see how that works out. Don't you guys think we owe ourselves at least what life allows us? Isn't that being aligned with life? Isn't that an exciting possibility? And see, it is not only allowed for you to suffer, it is, but there will always be the invitation back to not suffering. So you are always either in love or in a call to love, which is love. So you're always supported, always in love, always allowed, and always invited back to truth. Talk about a guided life. Talk about the possibility of trusting that. And I fail, I err. I sometimes hold my head and say, why is this happening? Oh my God, yes. And then I turn around and I see the sunrise and the flowers painted. I'm like, my God, how am I gonna not trust this? Whoever is behind this, how am I not gonna trust that? So yes. I trust as much as I can, as often as I can, as many as I can. I trust my kids to levels that make them really uncomfortable. I trust my parents. I trust my brothers and their horrible, horrible, horrible choices. I trust, I, I just trust because I know but my tiny little point of view is just a tiny little point of view. What's more, I know that what I am right now is just a point of view and it's going to change in five, four, three, two, again. So I hold it lightly. Trusting has taken me places that I would not have chosen for myself then, but that I would definitely choose for myself now. And it has shown me a life of pure beauty, pure love, pure possibility in which I can't get it wrong. It's impossible. I can learn, and I do a lot, but I can't get it wrong. And that's innocence. without knowing how to. I have said yes again and again and again to things that were way above my paycheck, <laughs> way above my paycheck and, and, and way above my comfort zone. Because, you know, comfort zones are just comfortable because they're familiar, not because they're comfortable. Oh my God, the possibilities of growth and expansion and collaboration are just unimaginable, literally unimaginable. And so I keep going back to our job is not to figure out how or when or where or with whom. Our job is to say yes. And then let life worry about the rest. Let life 
take care of all that. Let that very fabric of your being lead the way. It cannot, it cannot lead you astray. You see? Because you are, you are life. How is life going to want anything but the best for you? It's impossible. Life operates optimally here and in the last corner of the universe. And you know what optimally means? As little effort as possible. <laughs> as little struggle as possible. So let yourself go. Whatever you think you need in order to do that, you're making it up. It's like life is this huge fat river of happiness and bliss and all it wants to do is take you with it. And you are holding on to a tiny little branch. No, no, I haven't worked hard enough. I haven't suffered enough. So life says, say what? What, what is it that you need in order to let go? I'm gonna bring you just that. Do yourself the miraculous favor of not making your absolute well-being, your bliss, dependent on anything. Because that's the thing. You have the power to do it dependent on anything you choose. You're free. You are trusted. You are allowed. Have the courage not to make it dependent on anything and see what can happen. Like you've no idea. We have no idea. It is courage that is needed. It is for the brave. Because it is absolute trust. It is, it is absolute surrender. But it is the highest possibility. Look at babies. They come in a state of absolute surrender. Right? Absolute trust. They go from a world that is wet, dark, alone, to in a split second, to a world that is full of people, full of light, full of sound, full of all sorts of stimuli. They don't make a big fuss about it. They cry a little bit and then they go back to sleep. And then they trust. A pair of hands takes them, takes them places, shows them things, feeds them. It's absolute trust, it's absolute surrender. It is not true that we do not, we cannot thrive in the unknown. That is where we thrive. It's perfectly logical. Everything you know has brought you here. You wanna go further? You have to go into what you don't know. You have to, it's so logical. You have, a challenge, a problem you can't, you can't find the answer to, the answer can't be in what you already know because otherwise you would have found it immediately. So you have to go to what you don't know. But beyond solving problems and all that, even if your life is amazing and beautiful and you think it's perfect, you don't know what's possible if you surrender that in exchange for what's behind number three. You can't know. But the promise is that it will be worth it. It must be. Because there is no way you can surrender everything and get less in return. It's not logical. So what you are surrendering is the limitation you have created in exchange for a wider view. That's all you are exchanging. That's all you're giving up. The illusory limitation you've created. Yeah. 
Isn't this just a beautiful life? And all this just because, hey, guess what? There's this thing called thought that can create your experience. That's it. That's all there is to it. And anytime you get tired from it, you can rest in consciousness. Don't worry about it. It's a piece of cake. And we're still at it. We are still at it. I think I have talked enough. I would really, really, really love to hear you guys. What are you hearing in this? What has been your experience? What is, what is showing up? What is arising? Well, Marina, you have blown me away by your story of tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it was as, as if you were talking about me because I am experiencing the last few months or so that I'm starting to trust life more and more and more uh -huh. and seeing that if I just let go things will develop yeah. and that's surrendering yeah. and now I see I need to, to surrender a little bit more there's always more possibility of surrender. That's really good news. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Can you see the difference between efforting to trust life more Absolutely. versus surrendering? I've been efforting a long time. Yeah, I and know. Now, and now I've stopped. I've stopped efforting. And then suddenly things start turning towards me. Yes. And it's amazing. Yeah. And then I said, wait, wait a minute, where, where does this come from? What's, what's happening? What's going on? <laughs> it's the same as, as what I experienced two years ago when my monkey on my shoulder went away. We all have this monkey on our shoulder who's, who's talking to, to you and saying, oh, you're, you're, you're awful, you're terrible, you're a terrible person. Why did you do that? Why did you? <laughs> And then some, one day, he was gone. I was looking around, wait, wait a minute, what's, what's going on? What, what's happening? Yeah. He was gone. So, there must be something wrong. I'm not thinking anymore. What's going on? And then I suddenly realized, wait a minute, this is just the quietness I was looking for. There you go. And that's, that's so amazing when, you, when it happens like that. And, and now, sometimes I... I managed to really rest in my consciousness and be there in that just aware state. Mm. Nothing more. And that's beautiful. And that's what empowers me every time. Here you go. So thank you. Isn't it beautiful though that every, if, if we get tired of our thinking, the system immediately lets us know, give it up, come back. Yeah. From here, you will be informed in a completely different way. You're trying too hard. And that's, and that's what's happening. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. I'm very, very glad that that's happening. Good for you. Yeah. Can I invite anyone else to ask a question, share something? Go ahead, please. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see you, Marlene. <laughs> I, I just came on the call um, a few minutes ago, but it was perfect timing because when I heard you say that um, being in the not knowing is um, the way forward, it's like I wanted to rush in there. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> um, because I swear I've been 
you know, overthinking, overworking, um, trying too hard for so many years. And it just, the, the appeal of that is just, it's very seductive, actually. Um, wow, what if I just let it all go and allowed myself to be shown and guided? And yeah, so thank you for that. It's like, it, it, before it's like, no, no, I don't want to go into that unknowing because then I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Now it's like, yeah, I want to go there. Yeah. Be there. Yeah. 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 It's taken on a whole new allure. <laughs> I, like that word. I like that word. And and it's it's interesting to realize that it is surrendering to the unknown is not something you can force yourself to do. You, you really need to, you really need to start with an affair. You know, you need to have a love affair with the unknown. So you have to flirt a little bit and listen a little bit and get a little bit closer. And then it is a love affair with the unknown. It's just the freaking best love affair of your life. Right? Yeah. I was talking to someone earlier today and uh, <laughs> we were exploring, like, why, why do human beings want to figure things out? Like, why? We really want to figure things out. And, and we saw that, well, there's, there's, there's an egoic satisfaction in figuring things out. You know, like, yeah, I figured it out. But it's such a different feeling from the peace of insight. And so we are trying to look for, uh, or the excitement of insight, but it is completely different to satisfaction. Satisfaction of, I figured it out. And the satisfaction lasts so, so little. Whereas insight, takes you to a completely different world, yes? And so when we are trying to figure things out and we feel this, it's, hey, you're trying too hard. Come on, this is, this is not what you want. Come back, rest. I'll give you a golden nugget. <laughs> back to the unknown. In exchange for that surrendering, I'll give you the golden nugget that you're looking for. There's a song by Aretha Franklin that I, I am in love with because, because it triggered a really cool insight. And, and it's at some point it says, Take me for granted, leaving love unshown. And I, I, I heard that. I mean, I had listened to that song many, 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 many times in my life. But then I heard it. And I was like, hold on a second. What did she say? Take me for granted, leaving love unshown. And it got me thinking, oh, my God. That is what we do when we take something or someone for granted. We might be completely in love with them. We just stop showing it. And the beauty there is in showing it, the richness there is in showing it, the possibility there is in showing it. <clears throat> and then I started thinking, well, in how, in what ways am I not showing my self-love? And of course, the first few things that came were, you know, bubble baths and massages at the spa and a glass of wine in the evening, all of that sort of thing. But then I started realizing, oh my God, that monkey is a way I don't show myself love listening to that monkey. Oh my God, going into the past is a way I don't show myself love. Oh my God, listening to my crazy thinking. Oh 
oh my God, staying in the known. Right? Like when we are in a relationship, we take someone for granted. We think we already know them. We have the script. We have the concept. This is who you are. And now I am interacting with the concept, not with you. And so I stop showing. I stop showing up. And life shows up every day. Knocks at your door. I'm here. Come out and play. Let's create grand stuff together. But you need to leave everything behind. Show yourself enough to leave everything behind and discover what's possible today. Do you play with me? It is showing us love in so many ways. I mean, come on, look around you. It's showing you love everywhere. But we take it for granted and we don't show it back. We don't show up in exchange for that. And what if we did? is smart i mean how do i play just follow the good feeling it doesn't get any better than that you know there's just goodies after goodies after goodies just follow the good feeling no 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 no. we can't do that it can't be that simple well we have to struggle we have to fight we have to work hard we have to suffer in order to deserve no you don't Everything is already given. It's what you do with it. Jack Pransky says that all we are is well being, wisdom, love, and the possibility of believing that we are not. This sounds like the bad guy, right? But if you stop for a second and look at him again, this guy is freedom. So this guy is life showing us love, not taking us for granted, letting us know that we are loved, trusted, free. To use this, and anyway, we went. You see how love would not be complete with that one? You see how trust would not be complete with that one? You are complete. Fully, completely, absolutely loved, allowed, respected, guided, supported. in every breath. And you have consciousness that you cannot subtract yourself from and you have the gift of God. Go play. In this discipline of discovering my children, instead of 
believing that I need to form them. <laughs> I have discovered that <clears throat> within that freedom, that love, that well-being, that wisdom, that freedom, just like life does with us, I need to allow them to fully live the consequences of their decisions. Otherwise, I am robbing them of insight. I look around me and I see so many people rescuing their children, you know, not allowing them to live the circumstances. Oh, you made a mistake. No, 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 wait, don't worry, I'll fix it. No, 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 no. We are robbing them of their possibility to learn, to realize, oh, if I do this, this happens. Whereas if I do that, that happens. It's tough, eh? Allowing them to live the consequences of their actions. It's, it's love. It is love. Mm -hmm. Okay, you choose this, perfect. Let's do that. Because you see, when, I, when they were little, I thought I was the bringer of lessons. I know what you need. I am the bringer of the necessary lessons. And then one day I realized, oh my God, I have no idea what they're going to go through. None. How can I know the lessons they need if I don't know what they're going to go through? What if they have to fight for water and I am raising pacifists? I am ensuring their soon death. You see, like all of that. One of my kids used to lose everything. Well, he still does. He loses everything. Like he would come home without the lunchbox or without the sweater or with, he once came home without a shoe. I mean, come on. How do you lose a shoe in school, right? I was desperate. I tried to show him the value of thing. And I tried to teach him to be responsible. And I tried shaming him. I tried everything. I was desperate. And then one night I woke up with the thought, how do you know that your son is not going to go through horrible loss in his life? And you are teaching him to be responsible for it. You are teaching him to suffer it. I said, oh my God, I don't know anything. And so I realized my job, my job is not to bring the lessons. Life will bring the necessary lessons, the lessons they need, not the lessons I think they need. Life is the bringer of lessons. My job is to love them through those lessons. My job is to be a companion through those lessons. Just like life does. She allows every mistake. She allows every consequence and loves us through it all. Supports us through it all. And I bite my nails sometimes and I don't sleep at night and I'm like, oh my God, what is she doing? But again, what do I know? It's going back to the unknown, like going back to reality. What do I know? Nothing. Get your hand out of there. Don't touch that thought. Don't touch that thought. If you guys don't start asking questions or making comments, I'm going to keep just coming up with more stories. Come on, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. This is, this is so amazing. <laughs> um, I think Aline is one of the new to herself. Oh, good. No, I just, I just wanted to say um, I loved listening to you and I loved 
I think all the things you said, but especially um, you were talking about you are either in love or you are being called to love, which is also love. I think that's just, that's a love, that it, that's it. So <laughs> it makes me feel so peaceful and so yeah, Good. trusting. So it's quite, um, quite yeah. something. Um, yeah, because this, that means the suffering is a call to love. So you can't go wrong. So. Isn't that crazy that you can trust your suffering? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. You can trust anything that is being. You see absolute collaboration? Yeah. Yeah, and there's and there's this amazing beauty in anything you can experience. Um, the other day, I was walking our little dog, and it was raining, and it was it was a gale blowing, and it was awful weather. And I was walking outside, and I looked at the clouds. I said, "Wow." And and then if you if you just touch that, it makes life full. It makes life complete. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And those are these moments when you are aware. Just aware. No judgment. No second thoughts. Just that is, no. That's yes. it. That's it. <laughs> Nothing more. Nothing more. So you see, it's not the content of experience. Oh. It's experience itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I, I, being Someone soaked else. with rain and, and cold with the wind and, because we can have some bad weather sometimes here in the Netherlands. <laughs> and it's been quite warm for the time of the, time of the year. But still, it's amazing. It is. I agree. Someone recommended a book to me <clears throat> not long ago. And this book is written by a, a writer in New York. <clears throat> And it's a collection of short stories. And all the short stories are about a walk around her block. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. All of them are about this, the one it's walk around her block. The same walk. <laughs> yes. But then one day she goes out and just has a walk, right? And then another day she goes out with the lenses of a writer. Mm -hmm. So she sees completely different things. And then another day she goes out with her dog mm -hmm. and she focuses on what the dog is doing. And so she sees a completely different block. And then the next day she goes out with her friend, the photographer. And so a completely different walk. And then another day she goes out with her blind friend. And it's a completely different walk. And so again, we, we can fall in love with content. It, content is beautiful and amazing and oh my god the bliss of it but the fact of experience the fact of consciousness the fact of thought is enough so when we get tired of content when we are not seeing the beauty in content and we are experiencing suffering we can go back to the fact of the principles rest and be informed in how to come back. And so you see that it is not about, it never was about 
turning the Frankenstein into Romeo. It never was about turning the nightmare into the beautiful dream. It is about discovering the dreamer. And in order to discover the dreamer, you don't, you don't need a specific content. Any content will do. But while we're at it, we can fill our lives with Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> we can at least enjoy it. <laughs> yes, we can, right? Yeah, and we have, a, we have a choice every time. We have every a time. Every time. I'll go for door number four today. <laughs> <laughs> and if 10 minutes later I'm not liking it, I'll go for door number one. Mm -hmm. Every moment we have a choice. Every single moment. So and, hold that's, us. and that's real freedom. Yeah. And that is real freedom. Indeed. We've met the hour. Thank you so much for your wonderful talk, webinar, inspiring stories. Um, you've touched me. Thank you for that. I think I can speak for the whole community here that they have been touched by your story. Thank you guys for your presence. And you're listening and your hearts. It's been an absolute pleasure. I will be honest, I leave with the desire of knowing more about you. <laughs> but there will be time. I trust that there will be time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we, I've just had an, an, a little practical thing, just had a discussion with Keith Levens, uh, yes, today or this morning, really, and he's promised to be here in the fourteenth of December. Sweet. And um, and Keith is also one of the pioneers. He's he's been teached by by by, by Sid. Um, he's a psychologist from or origin, and he's very into the. Um, practical approach of the principles, I think. He's a very, very well, well uh, uh, um, informed man about the principles and, and would like to uh, ask you to be there because it's a once in a life, life, lifetime, I think. Yes, you're in for a treat, don't miss it. Absolutely. Um, he is, he has, uh, given me a link to a program he's starting in January and you might be interested he's doing a half year program um, and I'll, I'll pass the link on to Aline, she can put it on the um, 3P community site the Dutch community site where you can look it up and see where, uh, where what, is that, what is that if you want to join there's some room left and there's an early bird until 30th 30th of November, I think. Marina, do you have any programs for the next year or so that you'd like well, to bring forward? Thing. <clears throat> I am always debating on whether to do programs in English or just keep doing programs in Spanish, because I do a lot of programs in Spanish for the Spanish speaking community. But I know that I have to, I know that I have to. So I probably will launch something in English. I did last year. Uh, 12 weeks exploring self-love, which was really beautiful. I don't know what I'll do this year. I'll think of something. I'll go back and rest and be informed about what to create. <laughs> and I'll would let you, you guys. Okay. Would you mind uh, us leaving your website information oh, and, and your email address yeah. on, the, uh, on, the, on the site? Okay, Perfect. Then people right. can look you up. Yeah, and of course. I have to update my website. <laughs> it's cool. but i will i will don't we all 
things like this that make me remember, oh my God, I haven't updated that thing in months. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> You're most welcome. Can I say something? Please, yes. please, please do something in English. <laughs> I really okay. loved listening to you. You've touched me on a deep, deep level. Um, I haven't got the words for it and I don't want to spend a lot of words on it, but the invitation to come and play to the, the, the realization that you have to show up. It was, yeah. Thank you. Great. Maybe it will be about that, Yvonne. Yeah. Come out and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, <do that. laughs> Let, let's see what comes up. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne, for saying that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for not leaving love unshown. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Take care, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you around. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.